at the top of the morning. As you can see, I've come out for a little sneaky session this morning. Um, as I've said in a, a few videos of late, um, there's lots of work to do coming up and uh, I'm really wanting to capitalise on uh, the time effort that I've put into uh, into this big public water. And um, this is the month, you know, this, this for me, a April going into early May is the month when uh, I, I'm, you know, 100% confident for experience here before over the years that, um, you know, some of the big girls, which, which must be in here. Um, six years ago, I was catching them to upper 40s. So th those fish, you know, they have to be bigger. And, um, you know, catching a, you know, a big public 50 or even a 60 is a pretty special thing. And, um, you know, they're few and far between. And, and um, you know, they, especially when they're unknown, they, they, you know, I'm not fishing, I'm not fishing waters chasing fish that have been caught multiple times. These fish probably never been caught. So um, it's exciting and uh, I've got to capitalize on it. So hence I'm here, got up early. It was bloody cold, although it was 20 degrees yesterday, it's going to be 20 again today. Um, it was minus two on the way here, hence I got the hood up and that's not bad breath, it's just I've got bloody, it's cold, it's Baltic. Anyway, what I wanted to do, this isn't a fishing video today, um, it's a fishing, it's a, it's, well, it's not a fishing video, it's not about me catching fish. Um, you know, if something rattles off in a minute, then obviously you'll get to see it, but um, what this is about is is something which is which I, I, f I find very interesting, and uh, it, it's p particularly because of where we now live in France, and and that is you know barometric pressure and and fishing, right? So um, you know pretty much everyone or you know, most people that'll be watching this will be you know UK based anglers or lowland um, European anglers. And, and we know, don't we? We've we fished so many years. Most of us, we you know, we we wait for those low pressure systems to come in, and, and it's that low pressure systems, you know, when it when it drops the when the mercury drops below a thousand millibar, and we're in the sort of nine eighties, and we're going, whoa! It's absolutely looking pucker, and the wind's howling, and all that's going off, and everything's good. They're the times that we always feel that we're going to be in our best chances. But what you don't realise, and most people have never heard this spoken about in any, in any time at all, and it's something that I've observed. Um, and I observed it not so much for fishing, but I observed it for um, the potential for um, algal die-off in big pressure drops. Obviously, you get a thunderstorm come over, and when a thunderstorm comes over in the UK, a lot of fish farmers, you know, especially in the summer, a lot of fish farmers... Uh, you know, are worried. They want to get their aeration on because um, what can happen is you've got a, a load of algae in your lake and and that algae um, suddenly has a huge pressure drop. Say it's up at, say, 10.30 in a, you know, 10.25, 10.30, even higher in the summer in a big high pressure. Massive thunderstorm comes along and then, boof, it's down to 9.80. You have this huge 50 millibar drop um, and uh, th you have a huge die off on the algae um, and that algal die off sucks up all the available oxygen out of the water and this is when you can have huge oxygen crashes, DO2 crashes and, and fish can die. So it's always been a big worry and as a fish farmer of course that is a worry and we get massive storms come here all the bloody time. So it was during observing a big storm right on top of us and when I checked the barometric pressure, and we're not just checking barometric pressure at sea level, remember, we're che checking barometric pressure at station level. And our station level for us is 500 metres above sea level. And again, this is why this is quite peculiar and, and, and most people don't realise it. But of course, at altitude, you have less air on top of you. And the, and, and the reason that there is higher barometric pressure at sea level is because of, of basically the force of gravity. Gravity is attracting those air molecules and, and they're really powerful. Gravity is powerful. Um, the closer to the, to the ground you get and closer to sea level you get. As you get right up in the sky, the gravitational pull is less and less. So air pressure is less and less. That's my take on it, okay? So at 500 meters above sea level, let me just give you an example today. Sea level, 
um, barometric pressure today is 1027. 1027, it's high pressure. You know, we're in a high pressure period. Station pressure for us today is 977. <laughs> What most of us would consider a massively low pressure system has come through and oh my God, but no, we're in high pressure, but the pressure on the fish will only be 977 millibars of pressure. So what I've observed at altitude is that the changes in barometric pressure between high and low seem to be smaller. And I can only assume that that's because there is less pressure, there's less overall air on top of us so therefore, when the changes occur, it's a smaller change. But does this mean, and does this have an effect on our fishing? And these are questions I want answered. I want brains trust answers. I want any meteorologists out there who have a better understanding of this than me. I want people, um, fish farmers, you know, um, Simon Scott, answer me. Um, you know, what, 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 what? because I've never heard anyone talk about it from a fish farming perspective, this is, not just a fishing perspective. We can talk about both. But, but at the moment where we are, in a high pressure time, we are at 977, which would be considered a very low pressure. Now, if a low pressure comes in, it might go down to 958, 955. But that difference in pressure would be far less than you would get uh, at sea level, and therefore, does that mean that at this level we're going to get potentially less algal die-off? And, and then how does that then affect our fish? Because again, my experience of fishing um, in this altitude and higher in, in France has been during high pressure. It fishes, it fishes brilliantly well. Other people observe this, but you're not understanding maybe why that mechanism is occurring. These fish have less pressure on them all the time because they don't have the same barometric pressure as fish at sea level. And most fishing lakes in England are not very high above sea level. So therefore, the barometric pressure is what you're basically seeing on your normal reading. So anyway, that, that's been my observation. And, and my fishing observations, I say in France, are that I've caught brilliantly well through the summer. I've caught brilliantly well um, when it's hot and sunny. But when I look and see if there's a correlation there between that being at higher altitude, often it is. And again, we don't think it, but check it. And remember, when you check on your phone, you're checking, um, you know, what the barometric pressure is for the day. Um, you're going to be getting a sea level reading. 99% of the time, it will tell you a sea level reading, okay? So what you need to do to understand your station level is download a little, um, you know, a, an iPhone, for instance, has a fantastic altimeter in it and, and can read barometric pressure absolutely fantastically well. Um, so what you need to do then is get a barometric pressure, um, uh, uh, an app, and look for your station pressure. And it will take it, it will come from the closest place to you that has a reading that reports back on that. And your phone will your phone will give you exact readings as well. You know, there's lots of different apps out there that, that, that can do this. So, so just look at it, find out. Um, it's an interesting one. And as I say, I'm, I've, I've been perplexed about it um, because it's nothing I've ever seen written about. Um, you know, you can look on YouTube and you can find loads of bass anglers in the US and whatever you talk about barometric pressure. But they don't talk about it when they're fishing at a thousand metres above sea level on some bloody great lake. They don't tell you, well, it's much, much lower than it would be at, at, um, at sea level. They just talk about drops or changes in barometric pressure. And I, I just don't know if it's the same relevance as you get up at altitude. And, and what about the lakes up in, uh, up in the Alps? You know, you're probably talking a thousand metres above sea level there. So if a thousand metres above sea level, you know, you could have a high pressure and it might be, it might be 920. <laughs> you know completely different so anyway just thought i'd put that out there i'm just sort of thinking out loud i'm scripting anything as usual i'm just sort of wobbling on but if you've got questions or queries or it can start some sort of debate let's 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 talk about it because it's an interesting one to me from both that fishing perspective but also from the fish farming probably more so on the fish farming my my fishing experience I, i've been doing it for a long long time and and I've, I've sort of got an idea of what's occurring here for us now and, and, and where I'm fishing and what's going on. 
but the fish farming side of it really fascinates me because obviously there is a risk and um, is the risk lower for us at this altitude than it is for sea level um, fish farmers anyway if you've got questions or um, you want to get in on on the chat please um, please comment it helps us a great deal I think with the YouTube stuff I know I enjoy answering everybody's questions and if you haven't subscribed yet please subscribe it's still I'm I'm looking to try and get about another 180 subscribers and then and then uh, I've reached a thousand subscribers and that would be bloody marvelous in a few months um, because um, you know that'll help Sal and I keep keep doing it and hopefully I can get her trained up a little bit so um, I don't have to keep using the uh, the uh, the DGI dongle thingy what's it all right then guys I'll catch you later cheers bye bye